Question. When did this stage become a breeding ground for euphemisms? Conceived when overhydrated tongues and snap happy ears became one, gave birth to infectious lies, sick with metaphors, doctored the truth, watered down like blacks in 1960 South. I guess our poems have learned their history lessons well. The pestilence of thin skin has become leprosy to my words. Eating away the truth at them, it takes so much not to be flaky. And Tony said that sugar coating is great, but I say their cavities to store up depravity has forced them mediocre because they're still bound by the expectation of the easily offended. Bound to rust like old chains, false flag and religion around our neck. My tongue is a tense state in a battleground. The truth, the lies, the real disguise, bang, bang, the chief of tribes, the musket's prize is always to exalt us authoritative opinion or lies over others. And y'all, I have already counted six euphemisms in this poem. We as artists are infected. An expensive fact you can bank on. Truth has never been free, but we have paid our dues and nerves and shy and fear and shame and try and fail and retry and lie and wait and stand your ground and lay back down where lies abound. Enough water in our language to cleanse the itching ears of a nation. Our pockets are empty. What remains is truth. What remains is Jesus Christ and his redemption and my shame nailed to his cross, the word of which is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God at the tip of our surrendered tongues. Mm -hmm. Liberated by sacrifice. Motivated by a seemingly irrational love, a stake being driven through flesh to crimson stained cypress wood and Golgotha's battleground. Cross with no euphemisms allowed. Everybody in the building, everybody got a hand in the air. Everybody in the building, everybody got a hand in the air. Everybody in the building, everybody got a hand in the air.